Hey everyone, welcome to season two of STEM Time with Navya and Aishwarya. We are your hosts, Navya. And Aishwarya. So before we start on today's episode, let's learn a fun fact and go over our agenda. Today, we are going to be talking about Mary Wilkes, one of the first women to ever exist in the field of computer science. She still stands to be one of the most important and respected people in the computer science field. She played a major role in developing and evolving computers and their importance, so we thank her for her contributions. So now on to a fun fact about her. Well, a fun fact about her is that on the day of her graduation, she asked her parents to drive her to MIT, and she went straight into the school's employment office and just asked them, do you have any jobs for computer programmers? And you won't believe it, but she actually got the job. Wow, that's amazing. So let's dive right in to learn more about Mary. The questions we'll be addressing today include, what is her background and how was her early life? What is Mary's career and how did she start her journey? And finally, what impact does Mary have and carry today? So let's get started. Our first question, what is her background and how was her early life? Mary was born on September 25th in 1937 in Chicago. And her childhood was about the same as everyone else's, but the most important part of her early life includes her teenage years when she first heard the words, computer programming would be fit for you from her high school teacher. Her teacher probably saw the potential she had from such a young age and that she would be a key figure in the development to the future. During her time uh, as a computer programmer, she was one of the very few people that was involved in computer programming because although there were barely any people who had a career in programming, there were barely even any people who knew what computers were because they were so rare and only used in universities and government labs. And when she was graduating from college in 1959, she had many legal ambitions to get involved in law and and, um, school and get a job related to legal things. But she knew that her dreams were out of reach since she was getting the same kind of advice from everyone telling her, don't bother applying to law school because you won't survive. And everyone would tell her, including friends and families and even mentors. They would tell her that to be able to be successful, she had to take the step of changing her profession that she thought was needed to make her future. So now let's talk about what Mary did do with that advice and how she shaped her career and started her journey. As I mentioned before, her first career started by entering MIT the day of her graduation uh, after her undergraduate uh, degree in law. And she went straight into the employment office and asked them for a job, which she did receive. Again, this might seem like a peculiar situation because when you think about um, how she got a job without actually studying anything related to computer science or even anything STEM related, how would anyone get a job these days with those kind of circumstances? Well, one of the main things that we have to remember is that in her time and age, There were not many computer programmers because it was relatively new and there weren't enough people in the field to justify that she didn't deserve the job just because she didn't have a background. And who knew her skills could be amazing, which they definitely were. And if you think about it, Stanford itself didn't have their own computer science department until 1965, which was about six years after Mary had got her first job as a computer programmer. The way she first started her job is literally impossible to do now because we can't just walk into an employment office and demand a job. But she definitely did that and didn't have to go through as many processes as we would. And even though she did it her way, she did get her job without experience in coding, but she trusted the words of her high school teacher that she would be successful as a computer programmer and She trusted it over her four-year degree that uh, she had learned and built her skill set in law, and 
she ended up deciding that programming was part of her future, and programming definitely did not let her down. Right, and to everyone's surprise, Mary did an amazing job, and she quickly became a programming whiz. She was required to write assembly language types of command in her programming and explore new things that no one was even able to teach her because of the lack of people in computer science at the time. Also, she had no mentor, but her abilities and skills that she built up over the years uh, supported her towards achieving and becoming successful in her future. She's even stated that she had intellectual preparation for her programming job because she was a philosophy major and had studied symbolic logic, which helped her cre- create arguments and inferences with statements and strings, and it was too similar in coding. And everything she has learned actually paid off into what she was doing since they resembled each other so much. Right. So what impact does Mary carry? Programmers all over the world are credited for achievements and being able to solve a problem, but the real talent was the people who developed computer science first, and that can be seen by Mary and the people in her era. So since Mary's time was when computers were newly introduced to the world, the memory on computers, the IBM, and the code was only able to hold about 4,000 words. So imagine having that kind of requirement for such a complicated project in today. Most programmers would say it's impossible, but something that programmers in the past have had to do is make sure that the word word limit is reached, and when they have to be so concise in their code every time they make a mistake or don't produce the result that they want, they have to think of each step and envision how the machine would be and they would essentially turn their mind into the machine itself. And Mary herself has stated that you have to be so precise in your mind in order to do the programming because that's how specific it is. So let's actually talk about um, Mary's impact. In 1961, Mary was assigned to a very new project, which was the creation of the Link computer. It was one of the first interactive personal computers in the world, and a device that could fit in a single office or a cube. Now remember, computers, when they were first released, were very, very big, almost the size of a room, and it would take hours to program such simple code that can be done within a minute, and things weren't always as perfect as programmers wished it was. Mary was one of the first people to work on this project, and she did a wonderful job developing it. And she actually even was one of the first people to own her personal computer. Now that's amazing. Before we end uh, today's episode, I just wanted to say, um, at the beginning of the episode, I mentioned that Mary didn't actually go to law school because of the advice, or rather Navia mentioned, she didn't go to law school because of the advice her family, her friends, and her mentors were giving her. And she was told that she wasn't fit to be a lawyer because she wouldn't be successful. But guess what? Mary defied all boundaries against gender inequality and made sure she achieved what she wanted to. Not only did she achieve in computer programming, But after getting a career in programming and gaining recognition for what she had done because of her amazing contributions, she still chose to go back to Harvard Law School and spent 40 years practicing law, and she absolutely loved it. That's amazing. And her impact is that she didn't let anything stop her from achieving her dream. And she also made it very far in life because of the decisions she made and things she created. She is an amazing woman and will always be remembered even for the next hundred years because of her contributions. um, And her contributions were some of the most significant changes to computers in history. So that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for listening to our episode about Mary Wilkins, created by STEM Time with Navia and Aishwarya. We were so happy that you listened to us, and we really hope you guys had a great time. Don't forget to check out our previous episodes and seasons as well.
And before we sign off, we would really, really like to thank uh, New York Times for helping us with uh, this information. Stay tuned for more interesting episodes about more important historical figures. And we can't wait to see you soon. Follow us so you stay in touch for our bonus for the season. It's a really great surprise. So have an amazing day, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.